Well, it's 10 o'clock and um, I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Monroe County Board of Commissioners. It's Wednesday, January the 12th. Uh, for the record, I'd like to note that Commissioner Jones and I are both present and Commissioner Thomas is taking some a much, much deserved break today. So um, without further ado, uh, Commissioner Jones, would you please read the commissioner's public statement? Yes. We, the Monroe County Board of Commissioners, renew our commitment to welcome and protect the rights of all people, regardless of age, race, color, creed, disability, sexual orientation, gender, gender identity, marital status, economic status, and national origin. And we affirm the right of every person to live peacefully and without fear, and we will fight and resist at every step discrimination and harmful policies, whatever their source. We also stand in support of our county public school systems, both RBB and MCCSC. Thank you. Let's now go to department updates. Is Ms. Cottle here? I am, thank you for having me. This week, I will just get to it. Our advisory or county advisory, we will move from orange to red. There are very few counties that will be left in orange, and I think that they are probably on the cusp of red as well. It's not a surprise, but it is a sad occurrence. The, the whole state is red in terms of our cases per 100,000. Our current rolling average is over 230, the highest we have seen so far in this pandemic. We are expected to top 1,000 cases per 100,000 residents, and our positivity rate is around 20%. Today, we will post over 300 new cases being reported, another all-time high. Indiana, the Indiana Department of Health reported to us yesterday that about one in four people who are testing are testing positive. And those are the ones that are testing in, in clinics and sites, right? So it doesn't account for those who may be doing home tests or who aren't able to get a test at this time. And so they're staying home because they're sick. With this amount of transmission, testing sites are understandably overwhelmed. Turnaround times are rising and securing testing can be difficult. So patience is needed despite how frustrating it is. The gravity site on Curry Pike has increased efficiencies. They are still overflowing. Yesterday, I'm going to say that they closed. What they did was shut the line off at two o'clock so that they could accommodate the large number of people in line before it was time to close. So with many walk-in clinics, if you are very, the line's very long and you've got to calculate out how many of those people you can see before you close that line. So we know that places are very busy. We continue to request mobile units from the Indiana Department of Health. We expect to have another one here soon. And the Indiana Department of Health is adding some clinics, some mobile units to their availability list. Uh, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, that clinic has been extended through January 20th, and they've also added walk-in hours. So if you have the resources to look more broadly outside of the county, you may be able to find vaccine as well as testing um, in other locations. So please use those maps that we talked about. Studies are showing that Omicron does appear to be less severe, but it is three times more transmissible than Delta. Maintaining the prevention strategies that we've talked about all along is vital and stepping them up a bit may be even wiser move at this time. Improve your mask and or your mask wearing. The best mask is only as good as how you wear it. Limit your time around others in crowded places, especially when indoors. Stay home if you're sick and follow guidelines for isolation and quarantine um, if you are exposed. Those cases, though cases have in fully vaccinated people have increased recently, we know that those breakthrough cases will occur and they've increased in the past month, 
hospitalizations and deaths remain much lower in the vaccinated than they do in the unvaccinated. Treatment maps are now up. So there are treatments that are available. Um, they're not in abundant supply, but the Indiana Department of Health and the CDC both have maps up where you can look for treatments. And I will post that in the chat and maybe we can share that out when I'm done. Vaccine is still available, whether you need your initial series, your third dose because you're immunocompromised, uh, whether you need your booster dose, those are still available. We continue to do those. It is your best protection, especially from severe illness and death. It's not too late to get your vaccination, to get it started, to get your booster if you're eligible. But also it's not too late to get your flu vaccine. Influenza season is here. Um, and we're seeing a high level of influenza-like illness um, around. As of yesterday, Indiana has reported five flu deaths so far this season. Influenza A seems to be what is circulating the most at this time. But there's also a lot of other non-flu, non-COVID respiratory viruses going around as well. And this is what makes testing important because some of the symptoms can be very similar for these things. All of the prevention strategies that we talk about help with the flu, they help with other viral infections as well as with COVID. So masking, hand washing, staying away from others when you're sick, they help with all of these different viruses. Remember that ourshot.in.gov is the place to go for your vaccine options, coronavirus.in.gov for testing options, and again, broadening your search um, to look for surrounding counties. If you have the ability to travel may mean that you can get your vaccine or your test a little bit quicker. Thank you. Thank you. Huh. Very sobering. Commissioner. <laughs> Jones, do you have any comments? Well, it, I can imagine with the difficulty with getting tests, it must mean that the incidence of it is much, much higher than is being reported, um, which is pretty scary. And people really should be very serious about all of the preventative precautions they can take. Yeah, right now our like I said, our rolling daily average is 230, and we're going to post over 300 positive tests today reported. Not good news. No. So those numbers are very disappointing in so many ways. Um, so the more we can get people vaccinated, the more we can convince people to wash hands and to isolate, quarantine, the better everybody will be. I think that it's important that people hear that we're concerned about public health and that's what all of these efforts are about. So we appreciate all your hard work. I know that there was a full page ad in today's local paper sponsored by the hospital systems all across the state, urging people to be sensible, to help in any way they can. Um, and I know personally from personal experience that there need to be beds for people with strokes, with heart attacks, with other conditions that are emergencies. And um, they also need to have the people available who aren't exhausted to care for them. So thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any other departments that have an update for us today? Seeing none, none, we'll move on to public comment. Um, this is for items which are not on our agenda. Uh, you're limited to three minutes per speaker. We'll ask that you please state your name and whether or not you are a Monroe County resident. There at two minutes and 30 seconds, you will hear a tone. Ms. Dayton, can you provide that? Thank you. Um, and so, uh, Let's get started. I see that um, Mr. Shelton has his hand up. To go ahead. Yeah. Good morning, commissioners. I had to unmute. Uh, just want to, okay, I'm Jim Shelton. I am a Monroe County resident. 
and I'm speaking right now on behalf of the Court Appointed Special Advocates or CASA program to make sure you and the public are aware that our winter training will start in just a few weeks. It's going to run the 2nd of February through the 28th. It will not meet on President's Day. It will meet Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from 5.30 to 8.30. The training will be virtual. I just found out they've decided uh, that would be the safest thing to do. So it's a good volunteer opportunity for folks. It's a good way to get involved with your community, and it's a wonderful way to help children. Children who have CASAs are usually in the foster care system a much shorter period of time and almost never get into uh, the system a second time. So please think about it. Uh, basically, your job would be to be the eyes and ears of the court. You would uh, assess monthly how the child's doing. And when you had a court hearing a couple of times a year, you'd write a report so the judge would have the best information. You would work the case with a, CASA, a professional. And so if you ran into any uh, hard things, you could always turn to him or her to help with the program. So wonderful opportunity to volunteer. is very satisfying. I just had a case and right before Christmas was reunification of a four-year-old with his mom and dad who had been through addiction uh, and had taken about three years to get through that. So that's wonderful. They sent me a picture of uh, the little guy with uh, Santa Claus and uh, I forwarded it to my CASA coordinator and said, there are definitely rewards to be in a CASA. So this is something that you could do. You need no special training. Uh, the you just need good communication skill and the tenacity. Uh, the, the training will provide you with whatever else you need to know. So thank you for the opportunity to make the public aware of that. Uh, applications will be due pretty soon. So you can go to MonroeCountyCasa.org, fill out the application or download it and fill it out and uh, mail it in. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shelton. You're such a good advocate for the CASA program. Um, next, uh, we have Margaret Clements. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, my name is Margaret Clements, and I'm here to thank you for your good work in helping um, helping us with uh, expressing the will of the people against annexation. Some preliminary numbers have come in from the auditor and in most annexation areas, uh, over 70% of the public has expressed that they do not wish to be annexed. In some cases, it's well above 80%. In one area, area 1C, 89.5% of the people have expressed their will that they not be annexed into the city of Bloomington. And as you know, democracies are based on the voices of the people. The government can only exist by the consent of the governed. The people have expressed their voices over the determination of the properties in which they have invested their largest savings in most cases. And in the proposed annexation areas or the areas where annexation was passed by the city council, um, the people uh, live, you know, primarily in middle-class homes. And they uh, have an invested their largest savings in their property. The people have seen that in the past, the annexations, the promises made to the people for services like sewer, sidewalks, and streetlights remain unfulfilled. Um, these are examples of promises broken. The people have expressed that they believe that they have more than paid for any investments that the city has made in infrastructure to which they are privy through the purchase price of their homes and the premiums they pay for any services that they may receive by virtue of their payments um, in excess of what is charged to the residents in the city. So I would like to say how privileged I feel to have been a conduit for the voices of the people. And the people have spoken, and we would like to be sure that the Indiana government and the city government listens to the voices of the people. And I want to thank the commissioners for having listened to the people and continuing to listen to the people. I wanna thank you for your good service to the people of Monroe County. Thank you, Ms. Clements. Um, and thank you for all of your efforts on behalf of the residents of Monroe County. You were tireless in your organization and making sure that things move forward. 
Thank you. Thank you. And have a beautiful day. Okay, I don't see any other hands raised. So um, let's move on to approval of minutes. Move approval of the minutes for January 5th, 2022. Second. Um, did, did you have any corrections or amendments? No, I didn't. And the only slight typo that I found has already been taken care of. So I thank uh, Ms. Freeman for taking care of that. Um, Mr. Cockrell, would you call the roll? Uh, Commissioner Githens. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved, two to zero. Oh, um, I see that we have one other person that would like to talk here. Would it bother you, Commissioner Jones, if we move back? No, that would be fine. Okay. Um, the person's name is Mace Lately. Would you go ahead? You're muted. Well, maybe they inadvertently put their hand up and meant to, to do something else. Well, back on again. Um, okay, well, person seems not to be able to unmute. So let, let's move forward uh, with approval of the claims docket. Move approval of the claims docket, accounts payable January 12th, 2022, and payroll January 14th, 2022. Second. Mr. Miller, sorry, I'm not accustomed to doing this. <laughs> That's okay, I completely understand. And good morning, commissioners. The total for claims was $1,704,780.41. A large portion of that was for Hylet, um, which was $1,003,000. $903.20, uh, which was for numerous 2022 coverage and policy renewals. Um, some of those would include liability coverage, property policy, auto policy, workers comp, cyber policy, et cetera. So quite a few items that make up that a little over a million dollar figure. Uh, that's followed by uh, $139,541.50 to Stone Belt Arc Inc. for uh, first quarter payment. And finally, uh, as far as the most notable items on the AP claims docket are concerned, $120,283.41 uh, was for advanced correctional for January and February on-site medical and mental health services. As far as payroll, the total was $1,744,506.16. Approximately 70.4% or $1,228,287.08 for the direct payroll costs of the main supplemental and incentive payrolls, and the remaining approximately 29.6% or $516,219.08 were for the indirect costs or the payroll related AP claims. Thank you. Mr. Jones, do you have any questions or comments? No, I don't. I, I was shocked when I read through all those insurance lines. <laughs> yeah, there were quite a few. And, and as you saw, they, they certainly added up quickly. They did. They did. Um, is, is there any public comment on this item? Seeing none, Mr. Cockrell, would you call the roll, please? Commissioner Githens. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved, two to zero. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Have a good day. You too. I will, I will note for the record that there are no reports, so let's move on to new business. Commissioner Jones. Move to approve ERS wireless agreement to upgrade the sheriff depart sheriff's department's radio communication system. Fund name, cumulative capital development, fund number 1138, in the amount of $16,821.64. Uh, 
I'll second that. I believe we have Mr. Crone here to talk with us about that. Good morning. I hope everybody can hear me okay. Yes. Oh, good deal. Okay, so what we have here, uh, we're all familiar with being out driving around with your cell phone and lose cell phone signal or walk into a building and lose cell phone signal. What we're experiencing in the uh, sheriff's department is the same principle where the sheriff's deputy body worn radios are hitting dead spots in and around the justice building itself, which in one case has resulted in an officer who needed assistance from other officers not being able to get radio communication to do so. So the same way that we see our IT department put in like wireless access points that you see in our ceilings in different areas to cover dead spots. This agreement with ERS wireless is to implement four antennas to essentially do the same principle. And that's to cover the dead spots and interference areas we have in and around the justice building. One antenna will be mounted on the outside by the Sally port and the other three will be internal antennas uh, set up to the system on the inside. This is a one-time agreement with ERS for $16,821.64. Thank you. Mr. Jones, any questions or comments? Just that it's a little bit scary to think that there are places around the Justice Building where the sheriffs can't get any communication with each other, especially the Justice Building is a particularly important place for it, I would think. So thank you very much for looking into this and making arrangements for it to be taken care of. Well, to be fair, I can't take the credit for this one. This one predates me. So I've actually only recently been involved. So credit goes to others. Well, I'm glad they thought of it and took care of it. How quickly will they, the installation occur? Actually, I've only recently spoke to the vendor to get all the details. I don't have a start date once the agreement's signed and sent over to them, but I can certainly reach out to them and, and get an estimate. Sounds like the sooner the better. Precisely. Yeah, we're all concerned. Um, thank you. I don't have any other questions. Uh, are the, is there any public comment on this? Seeing none, Mr. Cocker, would you call the roll, please? Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved, two to zero. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you. Next item. Move approval of the Surveyors Review Board reappointments. Second. And is Mr. Enright Randolph here? Yes, hi. Good morning. Hi. All right, yeah, so I'll just jump right in. Um, we discussed this a little more in length uh, last year. Um, so I'm sure we're all uh, pretty familiar with it. The Surveyor Review Board is the board that uh, helps advise and approve our section corner monuments since uh, they are all professional licensed surveyors that are members of the Surveyor Review Board. Um, so with that said, um, I'm requesting to appoint uh, Eric Deckard, Todd Boardman, and Rachel Ozer. I'm also uh, requesting a waiver from uh, provision D in chapter 216-2 uniform provision of boards from the residency clause for Ms. Ozer. Um, and that's kind of it in a nutshell. If you have any additional questions, please just go ahead and ask. Uh, I do have one question I want to ask Mr. Cockrell. Do we need a separate motion um, about the waiver provision D in chapter 216-2? Or can we do it all at once? I think you can do it all at once. Let me look at the, pull that back up to make sure that it's stated that way in the, uh, Given what's in the packet, I think it should be an amended motion if you want to do it once or two or two different motions. Okay. Um, I move that we amend the original motion 
to include a waiver of provision D in chapter 216 2 of the uniform provisions for the residency requirement for Rachel uh, Ozer, a professional surveyor. Second. Uh, Mr. Carker, would you call the rule on the amendment? Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is amended two to zero. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Well, that's just that that motion. So oh. we still have the other original motion on the on the floor, I believe. I'm not I'm not quite yes. sure about this. Uh, so, uh, Commissioner Jones, do you have any comments? Um, no, we have dealt with this several times in the past and I'm fairly familiar with it. I take it Ms. Ms. Oser does not have any plans to move to the county. Not, I haven't asked. Ah, okay, thank you. I have no questions. Uh, is there any public comment on this? Seeing none, Mr. Cockrell, would you call a vote, please, on the original or on the amended motion? Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved two to zero. Thank you. Well, now, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And have a good <laughs> rest of the morning and day. <laughs> thank you, Dron. Next item. Move approval of the MOU between probation and the Center for Children's Law and Policy. Fund name JDAI Performance Grant, fund number 9146, in an amount not to exceed $45,000. Second, and I believe we have Ms. McAfee here with us today. Good morning, commissioners. You sure do. Nice to see you all again. Um, I feel like I'm getting my ticket punched a lot for showing up to your meetings. It's always exciting to be here. And um, we're here again to talk about the bonus grant that we were awarded in Monroe County. You might remember a few weeks ago we were here and you all authorized the contract with Department of Correction, which is the funding mechanism. So we're here today to talk about how we're going to spend that money. So we were given $95,000 in bonus grants. And what we were awarded the money to do is to continue the work that we're doing with CCLP, which is the Center for Children's Law and Policy. And you might remember they did an equity assessment for needs and services really to build up our diversion opportunities for kids and families in the community. They wrote a wonderful report. They gave us six or seven very, very specific um, recommendations. And this money will help us move that those recommendations from being on paper to being in our community. Excellent. Commissioner Jones, any questions or comments? Um, yeah, is, is the report available somewhere online or something? It absolutely is. It's available on the probation department website. Um, okay. And if, if you have difficulty or anyone else has difficulty being able, able to easily access that, I am happy to send a link, but it sure is. If you, if you get on the county website and play around a little bit, it's, it's right there. Okay, thank you. And this is a wonderful opportunity for the county. And I think um, really shows that we're trying very hard to create a more just system for the children involved in the criminal justice system. I, I, I also like the focus on the family that is that you're taking and you know we've been doing a lot of things with our criminal justice uh, reforms here and this certainly speaks to that intercept zero that we've been talking about that we keep people out of the criminal justice system uh, i think this is one thousand percent the way that we should be addressing things so i'm really glad that that you're able to continue with this group is there any public comment on this item Seeing none, Mr. Cockle, would you call uh, the role on the MOU between probation and the Center for Children's Law and Policy? Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. 
Motion is approved two to zero. Thank you. And I think we have Ms. McAfee again for the next item, <laughs> Commissioner Jones. Move to approve the MOU between probation and the Laura Fur Consulting. Fund name, JDAI Performance Grant, fund number 9146, in an amount not to exceed $50,000. Second. Ms. McAfee, and please. Good morning still. Again, this is kind of the second bucket of that $95,000. And the work with CCLP is really to work, the, the previous um, contract was to work on that specific diversion work. And what Laura's gonna help us do is make sure that we develop internally an authentic, sustainable um, youth and family. I keep using the word coalition with that really will support all of our youth system justice reform efforts. So, um, you know, making sure that when you invite those impacted populations that we know what we're doing, we know how to create that invitation, we know how to create, create a safe space for those that are impacted by the decisions that we make can really come and be present and be valued for the expertise that they bring. And those are not always hallmarks of system reform. Um, I've said it before, oftentimes what I call the big people might sit around the table and make all these great ideas and policies and changes. And then when we roll them out, sometimes they don't work. Well, what a novel idea to bring those folks to the table when we're having those preliminary conversations and talk about what are the values of what we're recommending, what are the barriers to implementation and work side by side with each other. So Laura is going to work with our community to develop those authentic relationships and then provide the um, structure that it can be sustainable. Thank you. Again, uh, Commissioner Jones, any comments or questions? Yes, um, I'm not sure I completely understand the term authentic when used in this manner. Um, could you explain that a little more? Absolutely. Um, what we're talking about is ensuring that when we invite a community stakeholder or a youth and family or a local or state leader to have conversations, we want to make sure all of them have the same opportunities. So we're, we don't want to create kind of a checkbox work group that says, yes, we asked three kids what they thought, check. We want to make sure that when we invite people, regardless of what role they're filling, that it is a genuine invitation to come to the table and have true input on what we're doing and how we're doing it. Um, you know, the, the word authentic is really meant to specify that this is a genuine invitation to be an equal partner. Thank you. That's a good explanation. Uh, I, I, I really like the fact that you're including youth what previously served in the juvenile probation system. And I think that one of the things that, that as an additional benefit, maybe that we're reducing recidivism by including them and letting them know how much um, their experience means to, to all of us. But I also like the fact that it's sort of like what you hear in um, the substance use community, that nothing about us without us, and it feels like that you're doing that same kind of approach with, with things, with what you're doing. So I, I really appreciate that. Um, and we have any questions? And are, are there any questions or comments from the public? Seeing none, um, again, I think this is fabulous what, what we're able to do. And, and I think it puts Monroe County in a leadership position with what's going on across the state. So I thank you for all these efforts. Uh, Mr. Cockrell, would you please call the roll for the motion on the MOU between probation and the work for consulting? Commissioner Githens. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved two to zero. Okay, thank you. Next item. Move approval of Hope Alight LLC consulting agreement. There are four funds involved, court, um, court al alcohol and drug services user fees, fund number 2504 for $3,000. 
the problem solving court user fees fund name, um, number 2506 in the amount of $1,000, adult probation user fees 2508 in the amount of $2,518, and project income or user fees fund number 2510 in the amount of $2,000. Thank you. This brings us to a total amount of $8,518. Yeah. Okay. Again, Ms. McAfee, please. Hello again. Hello still. Yes, this is, you might remember back earlier in 2021, we brought this workshop, this training to our community and to probation staff and TBRI, which is trust-based relational intervention, is a holistic attachment-based trauma-informed intervention. Um, which all of those big words really mean that probation staff is being trained with how to work with those that have been impacted by trauma. And the reality is, as we all know, all of us have been impacted by trauma. Um, but oftentimes we deal with those who are dealing with some of the most atrocious or egregious um, types of trauma. And our job really is, it has to be, be able to meet that client where they are. And if someone is dysregulated, if someone has things that are triggers and we as professionals don't know how to respond or support that person, the likelihood that we will make a positive impact is definitely depreciated. So this workshop is continuing to provide that trauma-informed treatment, trauma-informed response to the professionals in our, in our probation department. Thank you. Commissioner Jones, do you have any questions or comments? Yeah, once again, I, this is a wonderful support for the community, and uh, I'm really glad that probation is making the effort to make all of these changes and look at all of these different ways of improving the whole system. Thank you. I think it's, it, it is a truly a person-to-person -person connection that um, makes it easier. I, I once heard sort of this trauma stuff defined as if you were stabbed by, behind a McDonald's, you probably have something that comes up inside of you, what, what, you know, your adrenaline, whatever, every time you drive past a, a McDonald's. So if somebody knows that, you took it, take a different route if you can kind of thing. <laughs> and so, yeah, and I think it's really important to, to be talking about these things with the people that we're trying to help, especially. Um, so thank you again for doing these kinds of things and putting this together. Um, is there any public comment on this item? Seeing none, um, Mr. Cocker, would you please call the roll for the proposal for the Hope Alike LLC consulting agreement? Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved two to zero. Thank you, and thank you, Ms. McAfee, for all your hard work. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you, and um, a shout out to our department leadership, obviously Judge Galvin, all of the judges, and also to the commissioners and council for continuing to support the efforts that, that we come to you with. So have a great day. Thank you. Next item, please. Move to approve Graber Post Buildings, Inc. service agreement. Fund name, County General and Parks Operating, fund number 101179, in the amount of $49,999. Second, and I see we have Ms. Whitmer here to talk to us about this, please. I Excellent. Uh, the, the park board found this uh, to be a very important uh, service agreement. They are asking you to approve. Uh, the county council appropriated $34,800 and the park board is chipping in from their non-reverting $15,199 for a total of $49,999 to make improvements at the Karst Farm Park maintenance building. Thank you. Commissioner Jones, any questions or comments? No, not really. It seems to me we've been talking about this for a little while and I'm glad to see it moving forward. Agreed. I try to get to the, the parks board meetings whenever I can and definitely it's, it's good to see this finally happen. Is there any public comment on this? 
Seeing none, um, Mr. Cocker, would you please call the roll for the motion on, to approve the Graber Post Buildings Inc. service agreement? Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved, two to nothing. Thank you, Ms. Whitmer. Thank you. Next. Move for approval of Ordinance 2021-58, Heritage Creek in Harrodsburg, PUD Amendment Number 2. Second. And I see we have Ms. Nestor Jellen here with us today to talk about this. Hello, Commissioners. How are you? Good. It's nice to see you. Yes, nice to see you. Can you see my uh, PowerPoint screen okay? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Great. So uh, this morning we're um, going to hear about Ordinance 2021-58, which is a plan unit development amendment to, to uh, Heritage Creek, which is located in Harrodsburg off of South Harrodsburg Road near the corner of Popcorn Road. Uh, the property is currently zoned plan unit development. So what this petition is doing is it is actually amending an existing PUD that is on file. So the petitioner's request is to allow for nine duplexes plus one innkeeper or multi-use unit for a total of 19 units on the site, which is 5.93 acres. Um, there will be 55 bedrooms maximum uh, of those, each um, three bedroom potentially, and then one bedroom within the innkeeper or multi-use building. The property is currently zoned plan unit development, but it allows for quadplexes, so twice the density. Um, but that outline plan was reviewed by the plan commission at the same time as this amendment, and it was voted to uh, expire that PUD because it was done in 2005 and it's been quite some time since the development has any development has taken place or any permits have taken place. So the petitioner brought forward a proposal for duplexes instead and that's what you're hearing today. So the purpose is to develop this for condominium type housing and the petitioner has expressed an interest in supporting housing for adults age 55 and over within the Harrodsburg community. So the comprehensive plan has this as a designated community. And as I mentioned, it's in the Clear Creek Township near Popcorn and Harrodsburg. The site is broken up into two parcels. The southern parcel has been uh, committed to be open space for the PUD, which exceeds the 25% minimum requirement. Uh, the site also has infrastructure installed it does have a road bed that will need to be re redone at this point since the last bit of work was done as late as 2005. There is a uh, sewer line that runs across the property and is already connected and stubbed to potential development sites, as well as a detention area for drainage. So there is some significant infrastructure that has been installed and will be reviewed at the time that they uh, submit for a development plan review, which would only be if the amendment is approved today or at a future commissioner meeting. The current zoning, as I mentioned, is plan unit development and this uh, drainage area here is natural and is covered already in a uh, easement for the property. I do wanna just zoom in on the petition site a proposed illustrated development plan. This is not the development plan quite yet, but just so that you could see what they are proposing here would be a um, private road um, that would have a hammerhead turnaround and then um, 10 structures total. And each side of the structure would contain one unit. And then they would each have a, a two car garage with the exception of the innkeeper or multi-use building. So there is adequate parking. Um, and we also reviewed the site for landscaping and bioretention as well as um, grading and other possible constraints. Sidewalk construction will be along both sides of the road as well as uh, there will be a connector up to the 
um, Popcorn Road. There's a property that connects an asphalt trail all the way up to Popcorn Road that will not have to go along Harrodsburg. So that is the uh, site proposal. I do have some site photos as the site exists today. So we're viewing, uh, viewing south on South Harrodsburg Road and then along the proposed West Buffalo Trace. And then as I mentioned, that side path would connect. Um, this fence would be coming down. Uh, and there's an asphalt trail here that could connect straight to South Popcorn Road. And then here are the uh, storm sewer and manholes that are that have been installed previously and will be able to be reutilized or, or maneuvered with some um, retrofitting. And then the uh, detention areas as well for stormwater. So the plan commission did vote on this during their November 16th meeting and sent a positive recommendation by a vote of eight to zero with one abstention with several conditions that I'll go ahead and read aloud. So the approval was, the favorable recommendation was subject to the highway reports and the MS4 coordinated reports with the following conditions, that the petitioner amend the outline plan to meet any highway requested specifications for the roadway, including the roadway meet the manual for construction within and adjacent to the Monroe County right of way for the following, that the road width be 26 feet, the roadway approach to Harrodsburg Road needs to flare out in accordance with county design standards. The curb and gutter shall be used in the turnaround area. They will replace the six foot sidewalk on the south side of the road with a four foot sidewalk with a two foot grass strip. And that the turnaround design be approved by the Monroe Fire Protection District and the Monroe County Community School Corporation if the school corporation plans to send buses into the development. And I will take any questions. Penny, you're on mute. Sorry, there's a fan going in the background, so I was trying to keep it a little quieter. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Miss um, Nestor Jalen. Commissioner Jones, do you have any comments or questions? Uh, yeah, just a couple. I'm a little confused about the road at this point is it going to be a 26 foot wide road or it will be yes there with okay. the, these conditions um, that the plan commission has sent to you for review if they are enacted as stated then the road width will need to stay and be 26 feet that's in order to accommodate um, on-street parking to allow for a little bit more space and still allow for uh, fire trucks to maneuver. Okay, that, that actually answers another question I had. Um, I also did not see, there, there was mention of a homeowners association, and I did not see any indication that they would be responsible for drainage. Um, Yes, so the homeowners association document, um, that's typically something that is created after the amendment is goes through. And we have as uh, recently had our legal department review those homeowner association documents as they are created. And we would be requiring that the uh, funds for that private development be funded through an HOA or a similar um, receivership type um, legal document. So we are gonna make them be able to pay for that themselves. Okay, thank you. It sounds like the petitioner has really worked to bring this to the standards that are required. Yeah, the, the petitioner and the petitioner's representatives, um, we did go over these conditions with them and they are amenable and able to meet every one of them. So that is good news always. Yeah, thank you. It, Yes, it's nice to see a bit of development going on uh, in the Harrodsburg area, I have to say. Um, will there be landscaping buffer to the north side of the plot and with all the, it looks like there will be, but I'm, I guess I just want to be reassured about that. Yeah, absolutely. So these, um, if you could, can you see the landscaping plan on the screen? Yes. Okay. Um, so the uh, illustrations, are the trees that will be required to be planted. They have indicated on their outline plan that there's a certain 
required density value per 100 feet along the uh, northern, western, and southern boundary line. So this illustration is meeting what they are stating in their outline plan. It may change a little bit just in terms of locating a, a few trees if there are utility conflicts, but their density needs to remain the same. So this is uh, what they have proposed and there will be quite a bit of, of trees, especially on that northern side. Thank you. Um, and then also, because the, the, this will be done in, I think, four phases, was that correct? In terms of what they were going to do, um, will the developer set up any type of, of escrow fund or bond to take care of some of the drainage issues until the HOA is able to uh, assume that responsibility? That is a good question. So um, that is something that I may just check and see if the petitioner's representative uh, is online, and I just would like them to be able to answer that question a little bit more fully, Daniel Butler, when we get to him, uh, how they will do the um, payments in advance of all of the development being built out. And I'll find the uh, phasing plan. I'll just go ahead and pull that up as well. So is Mr. Butler available? Uh, yeah, I believe he's an attendee. I, I guess maybe it would be appropriate to if conclude Jackie Nestor Jalen's presentation and then the petitioner has a has a ability to make a presentation sure. according to the rules. So I think what I would do is uh, conclude have, have this part of the presentation be finished and then he can come he will come in and, and make his presentation and you can ask that question then sure okay here is the the phasing plan just to see that up on the screen for the the four phases that it will be developed thank you so commissioner Gibbons, your question was when um i believe this is buildings three, four, five, and six are constructed and occupied, will they be on the hook for all of the detention and, and private improvements until the other structures come online? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I would like to see if Daniel can be able to answer that a little bit better than I could be able to. Okay, so um, if TSD would allow him to speak and i don't have anything else to present but i'll be here for questions okay thank you thanks mr butler go ahead mr butler Mr. Butler, can you talk to us about whether or not there will be any kind of uh, escrow or bond uh, to take care of drainage and other issues until the HOA can assume those responsibilities? Seems like Daniel's having some technical difficulty. Um, there's also, uh, actually, I'm sorry, they have the same name. I'm sorry, Tech Services. That is not the correct person I just chatted to you. Um, I'll see if maybe Daniel can call in and be able to speak. It's tech services saying he's unmuted, but Zoom may have the wrong mic selected. Mr. Butler back with us on a different. If 
um, I'll ask tech services if Mr. But if Daniel Butler is the one on the telephone, how does he unmute that telephone? Yeah, it looks like uh, he's called in eight one two three three two eight zero three zero. Uh, it should be star six to unmute, and it looks like uh, they might have gotten. All right. Thank you. This is Daniel with Biden. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Sorry about that. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, morning. Just wanted to follow up with this project. Yes, we've been working hard to try to get a plan that works for everybody in this area um, and have multiple phases so that they can occupy the first four buildings to the west to start, but that'll include the construction of the pond and the construction of the road with that initial phase. And then you can see that there'll be subsequent phases that come after that. Phase four will be the completion of that pond. We like to have the completion of the pond, including the pond plantings, uh, the um, final under drain of the pond so that the sediment from construction doesn't fill up the, the under drain and cause problems um, ongoing. And there will be um, funds set aside for that in the future. But uh, most of the construction up front, including the mass grading of the, the pond and the, the initial coat of the road will all be put in as part of that first phase. Um, and this will all be under one ownership I think Lee Jones was asking a question about HOA. If it if there was anything sold off as a condo, then we would create that HOA, but this will all be under one ownership um, at this time. So that these will all be rental units, is that what you're saying? That's correct. Um, there is a possibility they would become condos, um, and, but the this is not a subdivision. So the ground, the, uh, the the land would be under one ownership in perpetuity. Okay. So if the if the condominiums were sold off, then does the HOA own the ground? Is that what you're saying? That would be correct. Um, we do have uh, somebody that would be hired full time. My understanding for the maintenance of these grounds and the funds um, would be paid directly to him for the maintenance of all facilities on site. Um, we're also going to do a, um, they, they call it an operation and maintenance manual of this pond, and we would be liable to follow those that the, uh, the county drainage engineer will have on file um, to know how to maintain this pond and um, how that would how that would be done if the pond was to um, fail in certain criteria. Thank you. Um, and the innkeeper unit that's there, um, it then will that just be sort of an office site and where the maintenance person will keep his or her equipment? Uh, likely. Uh, there was discussion about somebody uh, living in that unit, uh, but likely it would be more or, you know, um, as a place to store equipment. I, I was asking because there's no garage uh, associated with that, that innkeeper unit. You're correct. Um, there, if there was a vehicle, they would be parked in that driveway that was coming up to that unit, as you can see there. Right, and the, the driveway only has space for one vehicle to park there. That's correct. Correct. OK. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, I've kind of taken over the, the question here. Uh, Commissioner Jones, do you have any questions? For Mr. No, I think, I think you covered everything that I've been wondering about. OK. Um, then uh, I'll ask for advice from Mr. Cockrell. Is it now time for us to um, take a vote on this? Uh, according to our rules, oh, uh, you ask would do a, uh, you ask for if there's anybody here in support or are there any opponents to this change and they each have a 15 minute time slot for both 
uh, proponents yeah. and opponents. All right. Thank you. I, this is my first time to run one of these meetings, and so I apologize for stumbling a little bit. So is there anyone here to which is, wishes to speak in favor of ordinance 2021-58, the Heritage Creek and Harrodsburg PUD amendment number two? I don't see anyone, so I will ask if there's anyone who wishes to speak against uh, Ordinance 2021-58. Again, I don't see anyone, so um, Mr. Cockrell, is it now appropriate to move on? With yes. Those? Yes, okay. it is. I do have... Sorry to interrupt. Oh, um, I do have one question, and maybe this Mr. Cockrell can help. Um, when I, I heard Daniel state that this was not going to be a homeowners association or, or possibly have a um, condominium association, I just want to make sure that our document that we're including to be approved, the outline plan, is not. Um, I guess it's it's meeting everyone's needs that that we think it is. So it does state in the beginning of the document that um, the Heritage Creek Plan Unit Development is a residential condominium development of single-family homes. Um, it, in order to be a condominium development, does it have to? I mean, it, it does have to have an HOA. Is that language that we need to revise before a vote? Let me let me get back there. I, I, I'm I'm not the planning guru, but I uh, the the condominium. I guess maybe the the question is more for I'd have a question for the, the developer. Is that are they still planning on doing a condominium condominium, um, even if it's under the same ownership? But condominium is just a mechanism to have more than one unit on a piece of property so are they still planning on having that developing the condominium even if the ownership is going to remain the same this is daniel with planning family again that is correct they'll set up okay. be set up that way regardless if they're all currently under the same ownership so it will be a condominium so i think in that sense i think it's it's correct okay Thank you for that clarification. I want to make sure. But I, I guess when, with what you've raised, um, Jackie, there also in that the end of the second paragraph there, it says the, the property will be managed by the condominium owner association. So the, to me, that would imply that it, there should be an HOA um, and not the single owner. Um, I know when I was reading through the description of this, just in our, our short you know, agenda items, it says that this is a condominium like development. Um, so does this have any implications for what we're talking about here, Mr. Cockrell? I, I, I'm, I, so you are referring to section two, or is that correct? The second paragraph there, right, it says at the it, this last sentence there, it says the property will be managed by the condominium owner association. And then it refers to the Indiana Condominium Act. Well, I, and, and I guess I, I, I think what, Mr. Butler just indicated, and, and he can correct me if I, where I'm mistaken, is that they are going to go through the process of developing a condominium and uh, putting this in a condominium. And so the association would be created when you do that. Um, the fact that you only have one owner in that association doesn't mean that association's not there. Is that correct, Daniel? That is correct. Sorry, I missed spoke before, but it's not that we would pick or choose. We would follow 
how the wording of this document, regardless of one ownership or multiple owners. So the, I, I think what he was clarifying was they're going to do the condominium. It's just not been decided on whether they're, I, I think he indicated the current plan is that they were going to retain ownership in all the units of that condominium, but they still have to follow all the requirements of becoming a condominium. Thank you. I didn't realize that a single owner could, um, that, there, there, that there could be a single owner of a condominium owner association. We learn something every day in this job, don't we? Yeah. And a lot of it has to do with, and I'll digress just slightly, a lot of it has to do with how we look at condominiums. We don't really think of them as being a single owner item because typically they are not. Thank you. So at this point, um, Mr. Cockrell, would you please call the roll on ordinance 2021-58, the Heritage Creek in the Heritage Creek in Harrodsburg PUD amendment number two. Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved two to zero. Thank you, Ms. Jester. <laughs> <It's Nestor Jones. laughs> Thank you, Commissioner yeah. Gibbons and Jones. Appreciate your time. Thank you. It, it's actually nice to see something that's a little less dense going in. Just say. Okay, next item, please. Move to approve Strausser Construction Company, Inc., the contract for the Highway Brine facility. Fund name Motor Vehicle Highway. Fund number 1176 in the amount of $376,200. I'll second that. And I believe Mr. Cockrell is going to talk to us about this. Yes, and, and, and this should not be unfamiliar. Uh, we awarded the contract, uh, I think it was last week, but it may have been before, before the holidays. Uh, we received bids on this. Um, and Strausser was the lowest uh, lowest bid, and, uh, and we found them to be responsible as well. This is the agreement uh, for the actual work. Um, the, the boilerplate provisions of this agreement were in the uh, bid document, so it's so the, the uh, construction company knew about them and, and based their bids upon these terms. Um, at this point, uh, MVH is able uh, to handle the full cost. However, I think the plan is to go to the county council and look for other funding avenues to, so that the, some of this MVH money can be used for other purposes. But there is an adequate appropriation for this that will be used in the event that that doesn't come to fruition. And, and, and maybe I didn't put it on because we had talked about this. We are... We got a lot. We got a lot of money from the state to to enact a brine system. Uh, primarily, I think they want to. They did this because of all the bridges that were constructed through I sixty nine. Brine is a way to keep the ice from forming on our roads and bridges. I think initially the highway department is going to make sure the bridges are covered and hope to expand that program uh, further to along the roadways. But I think initially, at least, they're going to make sure the bridges are covered and see how it works. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Jones, any comments or questions? Well, I'm just very pleased to see this moving forward and hope that it can be expanded quickly because the brine system is much preferable to salt. Agreed, I echo those sentiments and I, I hope that we can move quickly on this. Thank you, Mr. Cockrell. Is there any uh, public uh, comment on this item? Seeing none, um, Mr. Cocker, would you please call uh, for a vote? Would you <laughs> would you please call the roll uh, on the Strausser Construction Company Inc. contract for Highway Brine Facility motion? Uh, Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved. Two to zero. Thank you. Next item, please. 
move to approve milestone contractors LP change order number one for Hunter's Creek Road project. Fund name, Hunter's Creek Road phase two and phase three. Fund number 8163 in the amount of $17,979. Second, and I believe Ms. Rich is here with us today. Morning. Um, so during excavating um, for one of the walls in the Hunters Creek Road project, um, there was um, rock that was, of course, um, um, that was struck. Um, when you have an NDOT contract, um, there are set quantities of 100 cubic yards or less. So this rock excava excavation encountered was approximately 150 cubic yards. So the change order is necessary to cover that extra um, 50 cubic yards that was um, outside of the contract. Commissioner Jones, any comments or questions? Yes, well, it seems that when anything is being constructed in Monroe County, it's very likely that rock will be in the way. So it's not surprising to see this. Very true. Yeah, I was, I was surprised given that this original contract was uh, close to six and a half million dollars. I'm surprised that the change order is this small, quite frankly. <laughs> And we hope to continue that throughout the construction. So it should be complete, uh, completed this summer. So, wow. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Um, is there any public comment on this item? Seeing none, uh, Mr. Cockrell, would you please call the roll on the motion uh, for the milestone contractors LP change order number one for Hunters Creek Road Project? Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved two to zero. Thank you. Um, and I believe we have a few appointments today. Yes. Move to approve the appointment of Kathy Loser, library board for a four year ter term ending on January 31st, 2026. And I believe we can do all of these at once. Yes. yes. Okay, um, move to approve Nikki Williamson to the Women's Commission, a two-year term ending January 1st, 2024. And Ellettsville City Council member, Dan Swafford to the Monroe County Solid Waste Management Board, a two-year term ending December 31st, 2023. Second those. Yes. Is there any discussion that you have or questions? Just thank you to all of them for agreeing to serve and thank you to Mr. Swafford for returning to serve some more. Yes, great, great. Uh, is there any other public comment on this? Seeing none, um, Mr. Carper, would you please call the roll on for these appointments? Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved two to zero. Thank you. Um, for announcements, uh, Commissioner Jones, do you have any announcements at all? No, I don't. Okay, well, I've got, I've got several. We do have openings on our Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, we're looking for somebody new to join our Redevelopment Commission. We still have openings on affordable housing, our sewer district our Substance Use Disorder uh, Awareness Commission and our Women's Commission. So if you're interested, please go to co.monroe.in.us and uh, submit your application. It's easy to do online and it's, it's actually pretty brief. Um, and as Commissioner Jones noted, we're very, very grateful to those who do agree to serve because it makes a difference. We just saw that with, with, what, uh, with what the Planning uh, Commission had gone through for the, the, what is going to be built, we hope, in, um, out in Harrodsburg. Um, there is still money available through township assistance for anybody who is in need during this time of COVID. There is additional money that um, the county council and the county commissioners have made available. So if you're having trouble with your rent, with your mortgage, with your utilities, um, with even um, medical expenses, and you're in a really tight spot, please, please contact your township trustee 
every resident of Monroe County, whether you live inside of Bloomington, Ellisville, Steinsville, or in the unincorporated areas, everyone has a township trustee. And so please, we want to make sure that people stay housed, stay healthy, have the utilities on, please contact them. Um, as noted at the beginning of the session, they, there are two blood drives scheduled for this month, one on January 31st from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., one on February 2nd at 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. Both of those are at Ivy Tech. You can register at redcross.org. Just look for the uh, donations on either 31st or February 2nd. And I must say that last week at the blood drive, um, they had a goal of 120 units being donated. They actually achieved 122 units, which has the potential to save three times that number of lives. So it has the potential to save 366 lives. That makes a big difference. Oh, less than 4% of our population donates blood to help those. And so if you're able, because there is such a critical need right now, we urge you to get out uh, and help. I uh, will remind everyone that all Monroe County government offices will be closed on Monday, January 17th, 2022 in observance of Martin Luther King Day. Uh, and our next commissioner's meeting will be January 19th, 2022 at 10 a.m. And uh, with that, I'll conclude the meeting. And uh, Commissioner Jones, what time would you like to come back for our work session? Um, it's now 11.16. Maybe 11.30. That would be perfect. I was just going to suggest that. So thank you. We'll be here at the same uh, Zoom channel. So uh, we'll see everybody in 14 minutes. Thank you.